Mohamed Morandi, we were speaking to before, uh, is the head of the American Studies Department at the University of Tehran. We were speaking to him before, and unfortunately, we lost the line. He's been good enough to stick around and has come back to us now. Um, Mohamed, before we lost you, you were essentially saying that you consider the US action today a declaration of war. Just pick up that thought and explore that for us. Yes, I, I think it's clearly an act of war. The United States has murdered a senior military official in Iran, a person well known, a person who is highly popular in the country. The United States has also, in my opinion, carried out an act of war against the Iraqi state and the Iraqi people because they, they have also murdered Abu Mahdi al Mandis, who is a senior Iraqi military official that uh, is uh, a part of the Iraqi armed forces. Uh, the Americans, of course, will justify this act of uh, terrorism and war, but uh, it's, there's just no comparison uh, with anything else that the United States has done over the last few decades. They've, uh, this is targeting the Iranian people. It is targeting the Iraqi people. And I, in my opinion, uh, Western uh, citizens should uh, leave the region immediately. If I was in the United Arab Emirates, in Iraq or elsewhere, I would think of leaving as soon as possible. Uh, Mohammed, uh, uh, taking your, your comments there about a, an, a direct act of war, but then contrasting that with what we hear from the United States, the Pentagon says that here was someone who's considered a terrorist heading a, a terrorist organisation who had already overseen attacks against American interests and American people uh, and was planning further attacks. Given that, and given, given the targeted nature of this strike, targeting this particular individual and another, does that really mean a declaration of war against Iran or was this a targeted action against someone declared a terrorist? The United States is not authorized to dictate terms to the international community. Just because an American leader or the American regime says that someone is a terrorist does not make him a terrorist. This is not the 19th century. This is not the height of the Western Empire where they dictate terms to the periphery and to the colonies. Iran is a sovereign and independent country. Iraq is a sovereign, independent country. Qasem Soleimani, General Qasem Soleimani, is a, an Iranian national hero. The Iranians consider him as martyrs. Overwhelmingly, Iraqis consider him as a martyr. He was the person who engineered the defeat of ISIS in Iraq uh, alongside the Iraqi armed forces, including the popular mobilization units. And that's why Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, who is also a senior Iraqi figure, is considered to be a hero. These two men are the people who have spared the region and beyond from ISIS that the United States, through its foolish policies, has helped to create alongside the Saudis and other regimes in this region. Other terrorist groups like mm -hmm. al-Qaeda, which we see right now in Idlib, being supported by these same countries, if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for people like him and uh, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, this region would, be, would have black flags flying over many of the capitals today. So again, the, for the Americans to declare something, to say someone is a terrorist, I think it's, uh, it's ridiculous for any of us to even take such a statement seriously and uh, by implication to accept American actions resulting from such statements. Now, I, I hear your assessment of the United States and how you see its role in the region. Let me put a counter-assessment about Iran that we hear often. Iran is expansionist in the region. Iran is involved in countries like Yemen. It is involved in the proxy war there against Saudi Arabia. Through its groups like Hezbollah in Lebanon, it continues uh, to foment unrest and to seek to expand its influence. It is actively hostile to Israel. It has sought to impose itself on Iraq, despite Iraqi people rising up in protest and saying they don't want 
Iran to dictate their future. It has just in the past week carried out military exercises with Russia and China that the United States, in its latest strategic assessment, says are the two most significant threats directly to the United States. So if we look at that and we look at the US actions towards Iran and Iran's actions in recent weeks, wouldn't it be right for the US to say, well, we have to defend our interests and the interests of our friends and allies in the region against Iranian aggression? Well, you'll have to give me a few minutes here. First of all, who started the war in Yemen? Who invaded the country? Who imposed starvation on the country? It was the United States and Saudi Arabia that have carried out crimes against humanity, and the Europeans are just as complicit. Who invaded Iraq? Who armed Saddam Hussein in the first place? Who gave Saddam Hussein chemical weapons to use against Iranians and his own people? It was the Europeans and the United States. Who then attacked Iraq and destroyed the infrastructure? Who then imposed sanctions on the country where up to a million people died under those sanctions? Who then invaded Iraq and destroyed the country? It was the, the, the American regime that did that. Who is, continues to act with impunity in Iraq and murders Iraqi soldiers who are fighting ISIS? It is the regime in Washington. Who created al-Qaeda in Afghanistan? Who created the menace that brought about 9-11? It is the United States. Who supported the extremist groups in Syria? Who destroyed Syria? Who is responsible for the rise of ISIS, al-Qaeda, Jaysh al-Islam, and other such terrible, evil groups that are Wahhabi-oriented, funded by Saudi Arabia, who the Israeli regime allowed to be based alongside their borders with Syria, alongside the Gola, occupied Golan Heights, in fact. Who invaded Lebanon? Hezbollah was created as a result of the Israeli invasion of Lebanon and the destruction of the country. Hezbollah expelled the Israeli regime from Lebanon. It is a national liberation organization. So when we look at the region, we see American bases in all the countries, such as the Emirates, such as Iraq, such as Syria, illegal American bases in Syria as we speak to steal Syrian oil. Where are the Iranian bases? Where are the Iranian bases in Iraq? If Iran is expansionist, where are the Iranian flags in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Afghanistan, in Syria? Iran's presence in all, in all these countries are with the permission, whenever they've been present in Syria and Iraq, of the governments in order to fight mm. these extremist groups that the Americans helped to create. Look at the Defense Intelligence Agency documents of 2012, which admits that the United States and its allies supported the rise of these extremist groups in Syria. They helped them to gain the territories between Syria and Iraq, the same group that we now call ISIS. So it is the Americans that are guilty of destroying this region. And beyond this region, look at Libya, the destruction of the country turning it into a failed state. The menace of Western countries in this part of the world and the rest of the world is nothing new. Colonialism and Eurocentricism and hegemony and empire have been a part of this reality that we're living in. But mm. now the United States has gone too far. They've carried out an act of war against a sovereign country. They've carried out an act of war against two sovereign countries. And those regimes that stand by the United States in this act of war, they will have to pay the price and, as well. And just on this, the consequences from this, because uh, clearly we're at a point now where the United States says one thing, Iran says something else. We've seen this action today. Iran is saying that there will be a response to this. What will that response be? And are we in an escalation phase now of this conflict that ultimately may play out as a proxy war itself within Iraq. With all due respect, this is not one side says one thing and another side says another. The United States assassinated a senior government official in Iran and assassinated a senior government official in Iraq. This is an act of war that is recognized across the globe, simply because the Western media will mimic what the regime says in Washington doesn't make it any different from what I said. These are acts of war, and therefore they will pay the price. I do not know what the response will be. 
I think the Iranians and the Iraqis and others across the region are discussing that as we speak. But if I was in the Emirates, I would leave now. If I was an American in Iraq, I would leave now. If I was an American any part in Southwest Asia, I would leave immediately. Thank you for that. Mohammed Mohammed Murad is joining us there from Tehran. Appreciate your analysis today.